Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and this is the Game Max Venus. This is on the market at the moment in the UK for around about £65, but have they done enough to warrant the price? Keep watching to find out. Okay, so this is the Game Max Venus. Now, this is a ATX style case from the people at Game Max, and as you can possibly see already, it's got tempered glass side panel, we've got a load of RGB, it's a relatively tall case, not very deep, and has support for up to 10 or 11 120mm fans, which is uh, pretty insane if you think about it. A lot of thought has been put into this case for water cooling, so at the top of the case we've got an option for 360mm radiator. At the front you could potentially do the same, but you would have to uh, substitute one of the fans, but we'll have a look at that a little bit later. There's also room on the back for fans. You do get included two RGB strips, which are connected via one header, which is attached to this front panel. And also you get the RGB fan that you can see at the back of the case. So all of that is included out of the box. So essentially you could get your build up and run in and have it looking nice straight away. But the idea with this is essentially to add more fans, add more cooling and really make a custom PC. So first of all, let's go through some of the I.O. on the front panel. So on this front panel, we've got two USB 2.0, we've got a headset jack, we've got a microphone jack, we've got a USB 3.0 port, a reset button, and a illuminated power button. Moving around to the rear of the case, you can see we've got this ventilation area here. Again, this is a section where we can put an additional couple of fans, and I'll just remove this back side panel, which slightly unusually is held on with four thumb type screws, which uh, is quite a new thing. I don't think I've actually seen this on a case before. Sometimes you get a couple of thumb screws, but generally they tend to be on the back. So having it on the sides is slightly new. And this does actually give you pretty good access inside. So straight away, as you can see in the back here, we've got tons of room. You've got at least an inch or so of room for cable management. Also as well, I've noticed there's quite a few rubber grommets. Um, Potentially for some people, they may be actually in some of the wrong places, but it's nice to see them included regardless. So starting at the top, we've got our wiring channel for the front panel connectors and the RGB section. Moving along the top, we've got three rubber grommets here. So again, if you plan on water cooling in this top section, this is gonna give you easy pass through for cables and cable management, all that kind of thing. Uh, there's an additional little grommet on here at the end, uh, which is gonna be in perfect position for your ATX power connectors for your supplemental CPU power, that kind of thing. And again, also fans, as you can see, this got a fan wiring going through it already. So this top section has been really thought out extremely well. Moving down slightly lower, we've got this access point here for getting to the back of CPU fans. Um, it's a little bit on the small side, I would like to have seen that come across a little bit further possibly, but due to some micro ATX boards, uh, that's probably not a great idea because you'd see quite a big gap behind there. But essentially this is designed for your ATX motherboards or your EATX motherboards, uh, that is what is likely to be put in here. So I would have liked to have seen that a little bit bigger, but again, that is a very small nitpick. Moving down a little bit further, we've got the RGB controller and fan controller. So this is a custom controller, which is using a four pin PWM headers for fans, which you can connect up to six, and also the same for RGB. So you've got three pin, five volt addressable RGB which also has its own dedicated pass-through and dedicated SATA connector. So if you're concerned about having too many fans connected to your motherboard, not a concern, you can draw power straight from your power supply. And again, having a SATA connector, fantastic. So good to get rid of Molex finally. The rest of the connections, you have a pass-through to your motherboard. So you have a four pin PWM connect to your fan header and you have a three pin five volt addressable RGB. But again, you don't need to use this. There's three ways of controlling the lights on here. You can use either your uh, reset button, which is connected up to this controller to cycle through the lights. You can use the motherboard control with the pass-through, but also as well, you get this handy remote control. So this has got control for the lighting and also the fans. So you can have three stages on the fans, so there's low, medium, and high. But again, if you want to, you can control it from your motherboard straight through the PWM connector. So loads and loads of flexibility here for both fan control and lighting control which is uh, really nice to see. And again, this is gonna be one of those things that adds to the value or adds to the price of this particular case. Now, I would say that this remote control itself, this setup is probably in the region of about 10 to 15 pounds worth of value. The RGB fan in the back, again, similar sort of deal, maybe 10 to 15 pounds, 
couple of RG strips on the front, say 10 pounds. So you're looking at probably half the price of the case tied up just in the RGB and fan control section. So it's actually not bad value for money. So moving a little bit down further, and also to the side, we've got these two areas here. So you can mount 120 mil fans for uh, exhaust. There's no filtration there, so they would ideally be set to exhaust. You don't really want intake there because that's gonna be drawing unfiltered air into your system and creating dust, debris, all those kinds of things. So that is essentially designed to be an exhaust section. But again, because of the way this is all set up, you'd have to do some pretty, uh, pretty good cable management to try and make sure that that is unobstructed. Uh, not entirely impossible. There's lots of tie down points, so it's not gonna be a massive problem, but obviously do take that into consideration. Moving down towards the bottom, we've got this uh, basement area and you actually have a removable drive bay. So that can hold two three and a half inch drives or two two and a half inch drives if you, if you wanted to. Uh, you can also mount drives in other areas. There is a section in the front, which we'll look at a little bit later, but there is quite a lot of flexibility drive mounting wise, but essentially, from the manufacturer's recommendations, it's two two and a half inch drives and two three and a half inch drives. These are actually on removable sleds. Now again, because of the way that most of these cases work these days, potentially you're gonna have wires and things like that here. So the sleds may not be accessible at all times, depending on how neat and how tidy your wiring is. I think for most people, essentially, once you've got your drives in there and you've got your wire set up, you're probably not gonna to touch it again for the foreseeable. So right at the bottom, we've got our drive case, as you said. Now this is removable, so if you're using a slightly larger power supply, now this is just a standard ATX power supply, which I've grabbed off the, uh, off the shelf just to power up the RGB. And as you can see, there's not a massive amount of room there for cable management. Now again, we have got a lot of area here and around the case to route cables, so I don't think it's gonna be a massive problem, but you may consider moving that drive case forward one just to accommodate a larger power supply. Obviously, if you do move this sled, further up, then that is gonna limit what you can do on the inside as regards to radiators and fans. But we'll look at that very shortly. Uh, connectivity wise, as we discussed, so we've got our front panel connections, which are tucked away in here. So again, it's all nice uh, black cabling, so it's not gonna show up. You've got a power switch, you've got a hard drive LED, you've got your power switch, USB 2.0, USB 3, and also your HD audio. So that's all there, ready to go. And it is really nice to see all these cables completely blacked out which is uh, something that some case manufacturers actually don't tend to do very often. So points for that, definitely. Moving around to the rear of the case. So we've got a section here for a mounting uh, 120 mil fan. Uh, and it's got a little bit of adjustability. So if you wanted to put a radiator in there, one which is slightly bigger, then uh, you've got plenty of room there, no problems at all. Also nice to see this little bit of extra ventilation above as well. Some cases tend to uh, keep a lot of heat here or if you're mounting a radiator in this top section, this is gonna give you uh, another sort of inch and a half, two inches worth of clearance before you come anywhere near your motherboard. Moving down to the PCI Express expansion ports. So four of these are captive, three of them are removable. Um, it kind of makes sense in some respects because most people are probably not gonna remove these anyway. Um, would have been nice to see them all being removable, but a 30-40 uh, split isn't too bad in my opinion. A relatively nice setup, there's no sharp edges or anything, it's all done pretty nicely. Power supply mounting area at the bottom, you can mount this either way. There is a little bit of room above the power supply, so if you wanted to have it fan up, you can do, or fan down, the choice is entirely up to you. There is actually a section, if I take the side glass off, there is a section in the front where you can actually see the power supply or any branding. So again, if your power supply has specific branding or maybe some RGB elements to it, you can put the power supply in how you see fit and also make it look quite nice in your build. So moving around to the front section, and as I said, you can see where the power supply goes in here. Um, if you've got a power supply of RGB, etc., that's gonna shine through quite nicely in there, which is a, a nice touch. And what I really, really like to see on this now is the Game Max logo. They dropped the green from this particular branding, which is fantastic, because if you're building a system and you've got a particular color theme in mind, the last thing you want is a kind of slightly off color logo or something which is kind of detracting from the rest of the build. So to go for this more neutral logo now is fantastic, well done. Actually inside the case itself, so all of this back section here is completely flat, so motherboard wise, uh, you haven't really got any limits other than if you decided to put say a radiator or something here or extra fans, that would be a limiting factor. But obviously if you're not gonna put fans there, then the motherboard can come across as far as you need it to, no problem at all. This is one of the areas where I'm a little bit confused. So we've got these really nice rubber grommets for channeling wires, etc. But in this section, or where your ATX stuff's gonna come through, there's nothing at all. 
So I don't know whether they're expecting you to wire your power supply through these top or bottom holes. Um, obviously there's no reason why you shouldn't do, but traditionally or more conveniently, we're used to having access points around this side bit. But again, if you've got fans here, then that is gonna block all that off. So that to me seems a little bit odd. At the bottom here on this basement section, there's room for mounting another two hard drives or SSDs or sleds or whatever you want to do. Alternately, uh, this section is ventilated slightly, so you could put an additional fan there if you wanted to. Again, I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to, but the flexibility is there should you need it. Moving around to this front section, now this is uh, kind of a bit of a bizarre bit as far as I'm concerned. Now where the RGB lighting is, fantastic, no problems at all. And the front of the case actually does jut out a little bit. So there's a pretty good area for getting airflow in. But one of the weird decisions that I've seen, which I've seen on other case manufacturers to do, at the bottom, there's actually like a mesh filter with a foam insert, but directly behind it, there's a cutout channel in the plastic. So the unfiltered air is just gonna come straight around the side of there. So that whole section is essentially pointless. There was as well uh, this guard which was in front of the RGB lighting, which this uh, this flexible kind of plastic was covering up the RGB strips, which as it came to the top, because of the slant of the case, if I spin it around a little bit more, so because it slants in that way, this top section was kind of blocking off the top fan. So if you did have a fan there, it would be doing basically nothing. So by removing this, it actually improves the airflow. So uh, yeah, you don't need to thank me Game Max, I've done that one for you. But in this front section here, so you've got options for mounting three 120 mil fans, or again, like I said, a 360 mil radiator and the fans. So there's plenty of room there between the drive bay or the actual top of this mountain. So you could quite easily get a 360 rad in there and fans and have a little bit of wiggle room. The RGB section itself, again, relatively well thought out and with the removal of this section, airflow in there is gonna be fantastic, albeit it's gonna be slightly unfiltered because of that hole on the bottom for the grab handle. Very strange decision. So flipping it around onto the base. So on the base, you can see we've got our usual suspects. So we've got a mesh panel there to filter any incoming air for the power supply. And this is the hole I was referring to earlier. So you've got an air filter here with foam and just here you've got a grab handle to remove the front panel. So that's completely unfiltered. The first thing I would do is get some black uh, electrical tape or any kind of tape and just put a piece of tape across there then that will prevent the unfiltered air coming in that section and it will force it to come through this hole here, which actually then is pretty much the only air intake, which isn't massive. So potentially we could find some uh, restrictions on airflow because of that paneling. So maybe leaving that open, it actually isn't such a bad idea. Moving around to the top section. So we've got our IO section here, uh, color-coded blue USB 3.0 port, fantastic. Two USB 2.0. Not brilliant, but it's uh, it's an extra port. So for something like an older flash drive or a gamepad, joystick, that kind of thing, fantastic. Uh, headphones, earphones, um, DACs, that sort of thing, no problem at all. Nice clicky buttons on the top, no problems with those. And we've got this full length filter, again, for the 360 mil fans. And that is relatively uh, easy to remove, just a couple of magnetic strips on the side and giving you all this access for your fans. So let's take a look at the RGB now. So if I plug this back in, and I've shorted out the power supply so it comes on straight away, so you can see what is going on. So you've got this RGB section in the front, you've got the fan in the back, and that's all connected up through that RGB header. So we can use the remote control to cycle through various functions. So if you want to, you can set the lights to white. You can set it to red, green, blue, as you would normally. You've got your fan controls in there, so at the moment, that is on the lowest setting, and it's quite nice that you get a visual feedback that you've actually pressed a button. Also, there's a light on the remote control, which hopefully you can see as well. And this is an RF wireless, so it's not infrared, it's RF, so it'll work from a distance. You don't have to have any line of sight, anything like that. And it, uh, it works quite nicely. So if we put the fan onto full speed, being that it's only a single fan, it's not gonna create a great deal of noise anyway. And these fans actually are a very good, very quiet fans. I did a review on them a little bit while ago, so you can see in a review up here. But let's go through some of the features of the uh, RGB itself. So we've got different modes. So you've got your unicorn puke, and all of these you can speed up or slow down. So we slow that right down, and then we can speed it right back up. So you get the general idea. You can control through, no problems at all. 
uh, different modes. So you've got the chasing colors, various different types. So loads of different colors you can choose from. Again, most of this you can control from your motherboard anyway if you want to. So if you've got a five volt addressable header, you can control it all from there. But if not, you can just go through these different patterns of which there's different cycling, fading, all that kind of stuff. I think for most of you RGB lovers out there, you'll probably end up staying with the, uh, the traditional unicorn puke as I generally tend to do. Again, it's very flexible. You can control it from the remote control, your motherboard or the reset button on the top. So we can do it from there as well. And if you press and hold the button, you can turn the lights off entirely if you wanted to. Press it again and they come back on. So again, you can choose to control the lights however you want to. It's quite nice to have the fan control on there. So if you've got a motherboard which has only got a couple of headers on it, then you can always connect up, up to six fans in there and control them all nicely from the remote control or use the pass-through, the PWM, to a single fan header. So I think that pretty much wraps up my uh, unboxing and first look at the GameMax Venus ATX case. I've got to be honest with you, I like it in a lot of ways. There's a lot of really nice features which they've implemented really well. The addition of rubber grommets at this price point is a good feature. Also the RGB controller being added in and the lighting that you get out of the box is fantastic. The one thing I would have liked to have seen was slightly better thought over the front air intakes, which still kind of confuses me a little bit. Uh, also as well, the cable routing on this side section for putting your ATX power connectors through, um, maybe graphics card power connectors, that kind of thing. Uh, that could end up actually being quite challenging, not having those extra rubber grommets there. A slightly bizarre way of doing it in my opinion. But again, this case, it's £63 as it is in the UK at the moment, is up against some seriously, seriously tough competition from the likes of Fantex, Cooler Master, even Game Max's own range. Uh, I would have much rather have seen this more like the uh, Game Max Kamikaze Pro, which I think was a fantastic case. It was just a shame it was micro ATX, not full size ATX. If they replace this front panel with mesh, I think they'd be on to an absolute winner here and maybe a few changes with the rubber grommets. And this would be uh, a, definitely a contender. So that is my thoughts on it. Please do let me know in the comment section what you think of it. Uh, what would you change? Would you buy one? Would you go for something like the Fantex P350X or maybe the Cooler Master MB520? Let me know what your thoughts are. I, I quite like what you get for it here, value for money, but I would have liked to have seen it come down maybe to the next price point down, maybe in the kind of 49.99 range. For me, I think that's probably the sweet spot for this kind of case. But again, let me know what you think in the comments section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.